One of my favorite things about this podcast is learning from the creatives that I have the honor of interviewing and sharing those lessons with you. It is amazing to hear these stories individually, but I also thought it would be interesting to hear some of their answers to the same questions together. In almost every interview that I've done, I've asked the guests what the biggest lesson they've learned about branding their passion is, and today I've compiled some of them together so that we can hear all of the key lessons that every artist can learn from. Hello and welcome to Brand Your Passion, the show that helps you turn the thing you love the most into something that people know and love you for. I'm your host, Holly Arnett, the brand coach for creatives, and I'm on a mission to make the world a more creative place, one brand at a time. If you're ready to get more eyes on your work, more dollars in your pocket, and more creativity in your life, you're in the right place. Welcome. Let's brand your passion. Let's kick things off with Ariel Bissett a writer and filmmaker based in British Columbia who hosts multiple podcasts and has a YouTube channel with over 300,000 subscribers now, among with many other creative endeavors. Wow. That's a big question. That's a big question, Holly. I think actually it is that you can change your brand. This is something I've talked about in in different contexts and in different conversations, but I really am glad that I have always felt the freedom for my personal brand to change things up. And it's always led to the right path. Following my gut content wise is always the right move. If I think that something's a good idea, that means it's a good idea for me. And that's the person that I should be trying to make the happiest because I'm the one running this whole ship, right? If I'm starting to get fatigue or I'm starting to resent my own thing, the whole ship will sink. (laughs) The (laughs) ship will sink. So it's much better that I'm making sure that I'm really excited about my content, proud of my content. And therefore, if I start to feel like, oh, it's time for a pivot or it's time for a slight change, that I should trust that gut. It doesn't mean that it's not scary because it's happened. I mentioned the one big time that it happened, but it's Mm -hmm. happened other times in my career. And it's always scary. (laughs) It's always really scary when things like that start to happen or I start to feel some sort of a change, but it's always led me the right way to to let that change happen. I would also say, similar to what we were just saying, but another important lesson for me has been creating more of a team and not doing everything myself especially brand wise because I have no talent when it comes to like photoshop or something I now understand photoshop thank god I've come so far I now understand photoshop and I've always made my own thumbnails and stuff and I think that I've definitely gotten better at a lot of my own branding because I I can throw together a nice thumbnail if I do say so myself but I don't think that I'm good at creating a logo or understanding like what's the perfect font I mean my reasoning for a font is that it's my name you know what I mean that's going to be the the extent of my knowledge so reaching out to someone and hiring someone and investing in myself is always it's always scary again it is always scary I've had a lot of conversations with people about how important it is to invest in yourself and there's a fine line between treating yourself and investing in yourself (laughs) but for example a year ago I desperately needed a new camera hilariously I had broken up with my boyfriend of the, at the time and I was using his camera and so I had to give him camera back right like, that was literally the only reason and so because that happened I had to go back to using my old camera and I was like no you know what I need to invest in myself mm-hmm. and I need to actually trust myself and, and have confidence in myself that an expensive purchase like a brand new camera is going to be something that is going to help my brand my image, my confidence, my content, everything. And so it was a very expensive investment, but I've never regretted it. Like the second I paid off that credit card, I was like, I have not regretted this. (laughs) And so in that same way, I'm really glad that I had invested in good branding for these different projects that I care about. Yes, maybe it's a bit more expensive. Like it's obviously more money than doing it myself because if it was just myself, it would be free. But like, (laughs) Yes, it's money, but it has completely paid itself off, not only in, I think, how good it looks and how well others perceive it, but how proud I am of it. Yeah, so those are, those are my two lessons. 
Next up is Terence Tang, also known as Tin Lun Studio, a hand lettering artist and designer from Houston, Texas, who creates murals and other lettering pieces, has his own apparel store, runs the Humankind Project, and more. There's two lessons. One is business related and one is personal. The, the business one is that you set out to build a business and you have this idea of what it's going to be and, and how it's going to be run and how it's going to function. But rarely does it ever work out perfectly in the way that you imagine. So you need to be ready to pivot. In some way, some form, you're going to need to change gears and do something different, something that you never expected to need to do or you know, some other way of doing something because of the audience that you're reaching that you didn't expect to reach. Now you have to get on this other platform or sell it a different way. But there will be something that calls upon you to pivot your thinking and you have to be ready to do it. Because if you are too stubborn about it and just stick to your guns, you may not make it. <laughs> and and I, I've learned that you know, running a business, it can be pretty ruthless. You kind of have to approach it from kind of a cutthroat perspective. If you don't make this change, someone else is going to do it and be more successful than you are. So you just need to be ready to shift gears and, and pivot for the good of the business if you want to make it. The personal one is, you know, I'm married with two kids. And when I started my business, my first kid was just born. He was like three months old. And so I was spending a lot of time in my studio working and, you know, I, I'm working, I know I'm working, but them out there, they don't feel it that I'm working. They just feel that I'm not there. And I learned the hard way that I have to find a way to balance my time between the business and family life. Because I kept telling myself that, you know, I'm building this business for the family. I'm doing this for the family. And, you know, what, what good is all that effort if the family's not going to be there when you come out of the office? You know, so, you know, I, I almost learned that the very hard way that, that you need to be intentional about how you spend your time and, and where you put your energy. Charlie Prangley is up next, a marketing designer and side hustle addict based in Valencia, Spain. Alongside working full-time at ConvertKit, Charlie hosts the Design Life FM and Inside Marketing Design podcasts, runs a YouTube channel, designs and sells digital products, and speaks at events all around the world. I would say that you have to start from knowing what the heart of it is going to be. How do you want people to describe this brand? And what do you want people to think about it? And what sort of people are you trying to, like what stage of their life are they in when they're seeing it, when they're experiencing the content that is under this brand? That's the sort of things I've been thinking about for sure. And I don't know, like with Design Life, for example, we felt like a handwritten logo made sense because we wanted it to feel like a really personal show and that it's like a show where we're at your level, we're not above you giving you advice, we're you know, going through the same things you are in your design career. And we just felt like the handwritten stuff was really friendly. And so that's why we went for that. And I feel like it's sort of the same reason why I've done that with all of my other projects. And I know there's ways to make things friendly that doesn't involve hand lettering, but also I just really like it. So yeah, that, that would be the main thing I think is knowing what the heart of it is, but also not being afraid to put you a lot of yourself into it as well. And like, I don't know if I was approaching my YouTube channel as like a client project, I probably wouldn't end up with the colors and the, you know, the, the logo and the thumbnail style that I have, because it doesn't make sense on paper for, for that to be what it is, but it makes sense for giving the brand a personality and the brand's personality is my personality, right? Because it's my personal brand. And so figuring out how to bring that through in the visuals so that it all connects when people see the content and not being afraid to, to do that, even though it doesn't technically make sense. Illustrator and designer Maya Sane shares with us next, whose work focuses on the empowerment of minorities in their personal and professional pursuits. Maya has collaborated with many incredible brands and organizations and their work discusses important topics such as racial injustice, PCOS, mindfulness, saving the bees, and more. I think, again, the biggest thing that I've learned was your brand should be definitely a reflection of you. It should be 
authentic to who you are like you yeah. can't you like hey I mean you can <laughs> but let's say if I'm like a unicorn and I'm like no I want to be a horse and I'm going to stay in this barn it just doesn't work out it just doesn't feel authentic and um and you can tell because then things are off your messaging's off mm -hmm. all this stuff so when you just accept the fact that you're like hey I really like for example I love robots I'm like at some point I'm gonna put that in there it's fine yes. like <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be like me drawing a robot. I can do something like, you know, play with like the texture of steel or like mm -hmm. play around with numbers, play around with bars, do whatever. Um, yeah. But like once you can like figure out those things, you just can pull it together and it just feels right. And and you'll know you're on the right track because you'll start to feel better. You're just like, this is what I want. You just, you're like that. I don't know. You're like that 18 century like artists who actually found what they want to do before they died you're like oh my <laughs> god I found the masterpiece <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me copy that and sometimes you do do a piece I know for a fact that I recently made this illustration with what did I call it goodness I feel terrible now uh, <laughs> but I did an image of the boy with the yellow bubble coat and he was in yeah. wants some flowers and just enjoy himself and that was the portrait that I was like wow, I got, like, that, that was my aha, like, yeah. <laughs> illustration. even though it was for a client, so I'm like, oh, I came, like, you know, truly claim it myself, but that's, <laughs> it was just the fact that me just accepting things I enjoy, and obviously took reference from, like, that, like, that illustration, I literally took images from my phone that I took while, like, walking mm -hmm. in the park, or I like fashion, bubble coats, that pulled yeah. it all together, and it's just, like, boom, you create this creation that no one else can create they could yeah. try it as much as they want to it's not the same because you did it and so, <laughs> and so you just have that confidence and you just start build, build off of that and it just works its way out you start you, after you reach that point you just need to kind of buffer it out like very slowly like 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 a, like a metalsmith person just like yeah <laughs> treat it treat it well don't go and like zoom off unless you're like very confident but like <laughs> play it off like you know just rub it out see what else you can add to the blend and just see if it works out and see if it represents what you want to do or what you want to say now i'm joined by sophie timothy aka sister scout sophie is a brand photographer mentor and the creator of the sister scout hood i think just like the power of being yourself and stripping back all the shoulds and the kind of stuff that we tell ourselves that we need to be or the person we need to be yeah it wasn't until I really truly really stepped into who I am as a person and kind of owned that it wasn't until I did that that my business actually grew properly yeah. um and flourished so I think that's been a huge lesson and and blessing like it's just given me so much freedom and sense of I don't know just yeah like a good vibe about like yeah. oh I'm actually able to be myself and and still like <laughs> people want to book me oh wow yeah yeah I think there's just so much fear and shame around like comparison comparing ourselves to other people and feeling like oh I'm not like them or mm. whatever but it wasn't until I was like stuff that I'm just going to be me and put myself out there and just do things my way that it turned out like a whole lot of people were into that yeah so yeah, I think the more you can kind of do things with authenticity, the more people can see that and then you find your people. Yeah, amazing. And the things that maybe you think, you know, comparing yourself to someone else, other things that are going to make you stand out and make you special and make people want to work with you <laughs> as opposed exactly, to Exactly, hundred yeah. percent. Yes. Yeah. So in my purpose statement now, I talk about encouraging people to lean into their uniqueness Cool. because I think that's just so important. Like the last thing we need is a whole lot of people who are the same. So yeah, yeah. yeah. the world needs diversity. Yes. <laughs> we can all embrace our weirdness and it'll be a great time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> embrace the weird. Yeah. <laughs> It's time to hear from Alexis. Alexis is a podcaster and coach who helps women live a deeper life, show up consistently for themselves and be proud of who they are. She's also a consultant for, for SaaS companies, helping them grow their affiliate marketing programs. A multi-passionate creative with a passion for people, Alexis has an amazing understanding of what it means to embrace your creative instincts. Never underestimate your intuition. Mm. And... 
you know, intuition is something that needs to be stretched and built over time. Yeah. And intuition builds confidence, it builds security, it builds this belief in self and that I can do it, that I believe in myself enough to know myself enough and be in alignment with my values enough that things are organically a yes or organically a no. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're building brands and building businesses, there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of second guessing. You're the one that has to lay your head on your pillow at night and go to sleep with your choices. And so as much as it's great to ask her advice and ask your community or ask mentors, never underestimate the power of your own intuition and the direction that your body, that your soul, that your mind and your spirit is leading you because sometimes that can be more powerful than anyone else telling you where you should go. And I think for a really long time, I, I felt this pull, like this natural force pulling me in this direction and I didn't go because I was seeking affirmation. Mm -hmm. Do you think I should go in this direction? Do you think I should go in this direction? Instead of just being like, Alexis, <laughs> <laughs> intuition, like trust yourself mm -hmm. and trust the fact that you're having these feelings and these desires for a reason. And they're pulling you, not pushing you. They're pulling you naturally into this direction. That's organic. That's not forced, you know? Mm -hmm. And we oftentimes want to get that, that affirmation or validation. And as much as that can be really helpful with launches and prices and all the things, that's great. But when you can really come down to this like grounded, rooted feeling of knowing that you're in a direction that really aligns with you, it really aligns with your values and your dreams and, and you're becoming who you want to become every single day, like you can't learn that from someone else. Someone else can't teach that to you. That's something that you really have to tap into yourself. And I think that's been the thing I've learned the most over the last 10 years is, is that confidence and trust in myself and valuing that equal as someone else's opinion, you know, or even more yeah. instead of putting someone's opinion or, or affirmation or validation, you know, 50 steps ahead of what I think I should do mm -hmm. instead of just kind of evening those out and seeing, you know, I'm still open to feedback. I'm still open to, you know, other people's thoughts about where I should head. But at the end of the day, like I'm making the choice and there's power in that. Now introducing artist and illustrator, Pepper Raccoon. Pepper is a digital and ink illustrator who creates original artwork and merch for sale in her online store, as well as running a commercial consultancy for illustration. I think it's it's been adapting to the ebbs and flows in both energy, income, time, everything. Just kind of understanding that I'm the only person who's driving this. And so when I feel unproductive, I need to take a break. And when I feel like I don't have enough money, that's just sometimes the way that it is and you have to plan for the future. There's so much adaptability that you need to have. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely the hardest thing to yeah. learn. And I definitely haven't mastered it yet. I've been doing this for five years. So I've learned not to completely freak out if I don't <laughs> make much money in a month, because I know the next month will probably be better. Mm -hmm. And it usually is. But just like the whole thing of like, oh, this one client who was supposed to pay me hasn't. It's been three months. Like, oh my God, like all that kind of stuff. It takes time to get used to being assertive and with yourself and with your clients and being like, you know what? I need to take two weeks off this year in the middle of the year. I can't work during this time. Or, oh, you know what? I need to send that email to that person telling them that what they did wasn't okay. You know, like that kind of being your own boss stuff yeah. can be really hard. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And like, yeah, going back to that kind of like romantic notion of freelancing as a creative, it's like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to create all day. And yeah. Like, but actually there are all those sort of like, business related yeah, things like, that we have to do like if I drew a pie chart of how much time I actually spend making art at the moment and I'm not happy with this I'm trying to get more <laughs> yeah. time you know the the pie chart piece that would be art making is probably like 30 or 40 percent mm -hmm. of my time honestly and it needs yeah. to be more but also I'm trying to run a freaking business here so <laughs> you know I got to do the work so there's there's a lot of that still and that's yeah. always going to be the tension with freelancing is especially when you care about what you do Next up is documentary filmmaker and creative extraordinaire, Henry. Diving all in on his passion at a young age, Henry produces short films, documentaries, and web content about all kinds of different creators and artists. Basically anyone he finds inspiring, really. 
His work has taken him from Adelaide all around Australia and now in the US, capturing artists, their creative processes and their experiences through his filmmaking. I think there are two parts to this. So part one, the biggest lesson I learned in the past that I've already lived through at this point is that when you're starting out, in my experience, the most effective way to brand yourself is to get known to, for doing one specific thing. It doesn't mean that you can't do a whole bunch of things, but you, it really helps to narrow down onto one genre of film, for example, like I did, or subject matter, like with, the, with making films about creators and artists like I did, because that opens the door to other opportunities that help you build your, your career in that field. So obviously it's important to choose a field or a subject matter or a brand that is something that you're passionate about because you're only going to get the work that people see from you. Um, but the second part that I've just recently learned or still am in the process of learning is that once you've gotten to the stage where you are getting that work, where you are known for that thing, which is where I'm at now, it's okay to start branching out and become and, and, and expand your brand into different things. I have yet to figure out how to do that, but I look at some of the artists that I've made films about, especially Po, who is one of my close friends back in Adelaide. She's known for being a celebrity chef because she was on the very first season of Master Chef, but she was always an artist before she was a chef. And she, she's written cookbooks and she's a television host and she acts and even in her art, she doesn't just paint. She like, I've seen works that she's made with bird feathers. It's so incredible to see how she's not tethered to just one thing and she's known for many different things. So I'm in this weird transitionary stage at the, at the moment where I'm realizing that, oh, it's okay to grow beyond the one thing that people have known you for and to start expanding into different areas of interest that you might have on top of the one thing that people know you for. Yeah, I think those are the two things that I've learned the most about branding in my short time doing this. Now we have Roxy Primer, one of two muralists and educators behind Panda Design Co. After meeting and bonding over their love of art and lettering, Roxy and Phoebe realized they had met their creative soulmates. Lettering turned into murals, meetups turned into business coaching for creatives, and before they knew it, they were all in on an incredible six-figure creative business. I think authenticity is the most important thing. You have to really love your brand. You have to be your biggest supporter of your brand. And if it's not authentic, it's just like your clients are going to see that or your customers are going to see that this is not, this is not true. This is not real. This is not this person doesn't believe in this. So I think you really have to look deep into your soul to figure out who you are and make sure that your brand is in alignment with that. Personal stylist, fashionably founder, talented TikToker and writer Ashlyn Greer is here to share with us next. Ashlyn has always had an undeniable passion for fashion before she even knew what it really was, let alone that it could be a career. But even after finding her career in fashion, she knew that she could do what she loved and create things that mattered and made a difference. Enter Fashively, an online personal styling service for real people living real lives. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is, you know, just going through a couple of those time periods of questioning what my passion was and I've always identified as this girl who loves fashion and loves clothes and, and believes in getting dressed as a way to express ourselves and confidence and all those things. Um, I think just remembering what that is, even when you go through those periods where you're not really sure what the medium is that you're supposed to be doing with it at that moment. I don't think I'll ever forget that lesson again, that like, this is at my core who I am and I'm so many other things I can write. I can, you know, do all these other things too, but I think we all have, whether people agree or not, I think we all have one given thing that is just our number, you know, it's our passion, it's what we're great at. And I think we have to hold on to that as much as we can. And that usually is where you will end up or figure out this is, this is what I need to do. Whitney Manny joins us now. 
Whitney is a fashion and textile designer from Kansas City with a BFA in fibres and a desire to create art through her fashion. Something she's most definitely achieving with her independent label, Whitney Manny. Creating a narrative between colour and pattern as a signature of her work, or as she puts it, my job isn't done until everyone in the world believes that fashion is art. Woo! I think the biggest lesson I've learned about branding, yeah, branding my, to really not take it too personal. I have learned, and I would say at least within the last th- three years, you, you first of all, you have to have a bit of an ego to be an artist. I don't think a lot of us like to admit that, but that's not a bad thing. And really ego in the sense of drive, because think about to get up every day and have the nerve, just, I'm going to sell some stuff and people will love it and they'll buy it and they'll wear it and they'll, they'll just keep doing that. That takes gut. But at the same time, uh, you got to keep that in check. And so Mm -hmm. I have learned to separate, okay, WM and Whitney, they Mm -hmm. are They are the same person. However, WM has to do her taxes on time. She's got to have good customer service while Whitney wants to go frolic and roller skate and have And also just because somebody has critiqued what WM has put out does not mean they are attacking you as a person. Yeah. And to be able to kind of have that separation, it doesn't mean that I'm detached from my work or that it's not one in the same or not the same person or anything like that, but it allows me to kind of have a little bit more freedom and a little bit more of an aerial view when I'm looking at my work, the work that I'm producing and the business choices that I make. It's a bit of a Beyonce, Sasha Fierce kind of, but yeah. really helps me because otherwise I would be walking around with my feelings hurt all the time. And last but not least, let's hear from Renata Payton, also known as Grim Ren, who is a Melbourne-based indie artist who's all about fun creatures and punchy colour palettes. You can see her messing about with paint pens, yarn, wood carving, and the list goes on. Basically, if it's vibrant and fun, she is in. I would say, for me personally, the biggest lesson is it's okay to change like a certain part of your visual branding throughout your cute little journey or whatever. I have changed my, my personal like online name once, at least with my Instagram, I've done a full name change as far as visual style. Like you said, if you scroll back far enough in my Instagram feed, you can see that I've picked some things up. I've definitely let some things go. It's okay to make those changes. I don't think a soul has come up to me and said the inconsistencies. I can't believe it. I can't believe you're not (laughs) running with this one color palette that you loved two years ago, unsubscribed, unfollowed, blocked, or whatever. If you don't try, you don't know if those things are going to work for you or not in the long term. So, you know, even if you don't have that 100% perfect vision of what you want your brand to be, just make something and then just tweak it as you go along. I promise that's way better than not making it at all because it's not perfect in your mind. Just yeah. just give it a go. That's all you need to do. So there you have it. From designers to illustrators to fashion designers to writers, all of these artists have a few things in common. (laughs) They have all built a brand and they've all learned a lot of lessons along the way. And I hope you've learned something too. I hope that from one of these artists or all of them, you have learned how you too can brand your passion and you've learned something that you can take into your business. There'll be many more creatives to learn from going forward and you can check out any of these artists full interviews at makerandmoxie.com forward slash podcast and I will see you in the next episode. Bye! Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Brand Your Passion and choosing to spend time with me learning all about branding, business, and all things creativity. You can find more episodes just like this one at makerandmoxie.com forward slash podcast. If you like this one, you can tap that subscribe or follow button so that you're notified about each and every new episode. And if you've got a spare second, please leave a review on iTunes or wherever it is that you're listening to this podcast because I would absolutely 100% love to hear from you. 
If there were some helpful goodies in this episode for you, it would mean the world to me as well if you could screenshot that podcast player right now, hop on over to Instagram or Twitter and tag us at Maker and Moxie. By subscribing, reviewing and sharing, you're helping reach more creators just like you so that together we can make the world a more creative place, one brand at a time. We can't achieve this mission without you, so your support means the absolute world. I will talk to you in the next episode, but until then, keep creating.